Hi, Scorpio. Welcome to your October 2018 Astro Update. It's Rena here. Well, we finally have come to your solar return, have we not? Scorpio, happy birthday to those born in the first decan or 10 degrees of a Scorpio, but all Scorpios. Happy birthday to all of you. Very interesting set of transits for you. It's not like there's a lot happening in October, but Venus is going retrograde in your sign. I'll get to that in a minute, but the sun is in the 12th house as the month of October begins. This is true every year. And this is a good time to remind you that this is a general reading. And the the, the transits in what house that, that I talk about um, will vary from Scorpio to Scorpio, whether you're watching for your sun in Scorpio or your rising Scorpio. If you're watching for your sun in Scorpio, this is especially true because the natal chart is constructed from the time of birth. And so that is going to give you your rising sign and that may be anything. And so you could have a totally different setup than what I'm talking about here. But the point of these readings is to give you some idea of what's happening, whether or not it happens exactly at this time, doesn't matter. At least you get a, a feel for it. So as the month begins, um, the sun is in that 12th house and you feel very contemplative. And this is a water house, like the house you rule, which is the eighth house. The 12th house is ruled by Pisces. So it's all things Piscean. Um, typically when the sun transits the 12th house, people are not as social as they usually are. They tend to be much more to themselves and this is because it's almost like becoming a hermit for a little bit. Even physically, you may find that you don't have quite the same energy. And it's like, it's kind of like when you're in the winter cycle, which those of us in Nor Northern Hemisphere are going to be experiencing before we know it, we tend to be a little bit more internalized, don't we? We don't tend, except for Christmas. I wouldn't be surprised if that was one of the reasons that the, the solstice was celebrated is because that was beginning the, the period when people were going to become more into themselves. And so it was like one last blast with others before they kind of hibernate. And this is kind of what it is for you. And the best use of this energy is to go with the flow is not to try to fight it and say, Oh, I don't have any energy. I'm going to go to the gym twice as often. I'm going to, you know, whatever to try to energize myself. No. When in Rome, <laughs> do as the Romans. Okay. So that's happening. And Venus is in your sign. And this is kind of like the big story because Venus is going to retrograde in your sign. And Venus only retrogrades once every year and a half. So it's kind of a big deal. So when Venus is in your first house, and by the way, this is coming from the September period, Venus in Scorpio. So it's um, something you've been dealing with. It can be advantageous, not only because you may look better than you ever have, at least uh, until the next time Venus comes into your sign. But it helps you to gain traction. If you're trying to get a job, you come across in a more uh, agreeable sort of way. You may have the tendency to get that promotion or get that lover. I, I don't really like the word lover. It sounds so cheesy that partner. Okay. Um, because the first house is the house of the self. And this is where you are promoting who you are to others. Okay. Whether it be the way you look, the way you act. And so it's that image. So you're your own best PR person when Venus is in the first house. Mercury is with the sun in the 12th house. 
So <laughs> it's kind of funny because Mercury is part of the package. I mean, when you're trying to promote yourself, you open your mouth, right? And you're talking. So when you're talking with Mercury in the 12th house, you may be talking a bit of gobbledygook because Mercury is not the best communicator, effective communicator in the 12th house. It's kind of like, you know, I was going to say, it's like uh, talking while you're tripping on acid or something. Because the 12th house is the house of um, you know, transcendent experiences, mystical experiences, merging with the cosmos, past lives, and things like that, dreams. So Mercury is very surreal and very other, you know, otherworldly, not grounded in the 12th house. Okay, it's not practical. And so it's great for artists, though, it's great for visionaries. So there may be a little bit of a kind of a conflict between how you look and how people perceive you, but how you're communicating your message. Luckily for you, it won't, it won't be too long before Mercury goes into that house and that will be on the ninth of the month. So, you know, you've got that covered. It's not going to be um, too bad, but uh, Venus goes retrograde. On the 5th of October, 10 degrees of, of Scorpio. So in that first house, and this is the house of the self and Venus can be how you value yourself. Obviously, we could just do the easy one and say, well, maybe you're going to be rethinking how you look because you want to present yourself in the best light. So you may be thinking, do I need Botox? Do I need, which I, I'm just kind of being a little bit jokey about that. I, I personally think people look better without it. I think people don't, just having smooth skin doesn't make you look good. And I think a lot of Scorpios are not afraid of a few wrinkles because you are fierce, you know, for lack of a better word. And uh, wrinkles are fierce. And they kind of reflect a life that has been lived. And um, so it may not be along those lines. Maybe it's something, just a haircut. Maybe it's not anything like deep, but you think that, you know, if you get your hair cut a certain way, it will look younger. You will look younger and you'll be able to get that job if you're in between jobs, but you're just rethinking it. But here's the thing that I think is very important is that Venus in the second house, when it rules earned income and possessions, it also rules self-esteem. So you, some of you Scorpios may be looking at self-esteem issues and yes, even Scorpio has to deal with self-esteem issues. They may not admit it very easily, but they do. And this may be a very important time for you as you kind of reflect on this. And interestingly, Venus goes back into the 12th house as well. The Venus retrograde can bring an old love back into the picture. And so it's very possible that somebody contacts you that you thought the two of you were over with. And you have to confront your desire maybe to be with this person and whether or not they're really good for you. And you may very well say, you know, how can I justify this? Because they did this or that to me. Um, is that really a sign of self-love for me to go back with them? And that might be very challenging for some of you because you may be tempted to go back to this person. On the 8th, there is a new moon in your 12th house, Scorpio. So this is a time of great spiritual power. And a new moon in this house can bring about some kind of either revelation you're having. Well, it's that would be more of the uh, full moon. I think with the new moon opportunities in sp the spiritual area. So whether it's that you are contacting, maybe you come into contact with a teacher, a spiritual teacher that is, you know, perfect for you and what you're about or you come across a perfect spiritual center 
for you. It's like a new beginning in that area. Maybe you're starting a new practice. The next day on the 9th, Mercury goes into your sign, as I mentioned earlier. So you're more aligned with, you know, your message and you are in alignment. And that makes it easier for you to make things happen. On the 23rd, the sun goes into your sign. So happy birthday. Happy solar return. Things are starting to feel more alive within you. You're starting to wake up. You're starting to get come out of hibernation, becoming more energized. The very next day, there's a full moon in Taurus in your opposite sign, in opposite house. So the opposite sign is Taurus. Opposite house is the seventh house of committed partnership. This could be an ending of a marriage or a committed partnership. Now, or, or it could bring something to light. It doesn't have to be an ending. So please um, hold off on the thumbs down. Uh, sometimes I am like, okay, why did they thumb it down? It must have been something. Was it something I said? But you know what? Um, if let's say that this is something to do with a marriage ending, because there is this idea of like a love coming back into your life. I think that this relationship was already on the outs. Maybe you're even getting a divorce and this is like the divorce decree coming in or something. So I don't think that this has anything to do with a particular um, breakup that happens in the month of October. As a matter of fact, this is interesting. Back in May, we had a new moon in Taurus and this was mid month. I believe it was, was it the 15th? Something like that. And on that very same day, Uranus, which is this wild card type of a planetary influence, went into Taurus. It had been in Aries for many years, you know, for seven years or so. And it's going to go back into Aries when it, you know, I think it's now retrograding and it's going to go back into a late degree of Aries <sighs> later this year. It's right now, I think it's about two degrees as I'm recording this in September. It's about two degrees of Taurus, but it's retrograding, losing degrees. And so that was on the same day that you had a new moon in the seventh house. So to have Uranus transing your, your partnership sector can mean that there's, there are a lot of twists and turns in the next seven years when it comes to committed partnership. And for Scorpio, I think this is going to be a breath of fresh air because you are a fixed sign. Taurus is a fixed sign. And there tends to be a sense of being in a rut and not embracing change. And you're going to have to endure change in your, or maybe uh, innovation or some kind of like a totally different type of attitude. This may totally change the face of how you view your committed partnership. Because uh, Scorpio is a sign that tends to favor monogamy um, totally and completely. And you probably want to be with your partner all the time as well, because Scorpio is like all or nothing. But Uranus wants freedom first and foremost. So it could be a situation where you decide if you've been in a marriage and if, if you are getting out of one and the full moon in Taurus is kind of symbolizing that or indicating that, that you may decide that you want to be a free agent for the next seven years and that you don't even want, even if you fall in love with somebody, that you're not going to move in with them, that you're not going to even consider getting married or moving in with them because you want to experience this sense of autonomy and, and, or you, you're tired of being like other people and you don't want 
to just think, oh, I have to get married. And maybe you decide to have a very unusual living arrangement with this person where you live with them part time or, you know, you have separate residences and you get together, but you still maintain your own um, play, your own living space. Uh, you may have all kinds of permutations, but it's experimentation. I think that's another quality of Uranus is that it's not stagnant. And I think sometimes Scorpios can be stagnant. So that's wonderful. And so that might be fitting into this in some way with the full moon in Taurus where the old ways have to just uh, die out. You're not willing to tolerate a marriage, a partnership that is less than what you deserve, but also too rooted in the past. And again, this could be self-esteem issues where you're saying to yourself, I deserve more than this. On the 31st, which is Halloween or in the pagan tradition, isn't it pronounced Sao Wen? Um, we have two transits. And just a little aside, isn't it absolutely deliciously perfect, Scorpio, that Halloween happens to be a Scorpio holiday? It wouldn't be a holiday uh, for any other sign. I mean, this is like a perfect this tells you that astrology really is on point because this is such a, um, you know, macabre and, you know, kind of a you know creepy uh, time, but fun, creepy. And this is right up Scorpio's alley. So it might be your favorite holiday. Who knows? Um, there are two transits. Mercury goes into Sagittarius which is your second house of earned income and Venus retrogrades into Libra into that 12th house. So that could be um, some kind of realization of twin flames with you and another person or soulmates. And it could have something to do with um, a person who has come back into your life because this is in retrograde still. So um, just look for these themes. If somebody shows up that you've already known and maybe that you've had some issues with, you may have major issues with this person, but you're kind of looking at it in terms of karmic partnerships, um, soul contracts, and things like that. You may get some insights into that um, because what planets are in the 12th right now? Well, I guess at that point, only Venus is in the 12th. But, it, you know, just keep um, your awareness up to see if anything transpires that, even like your dreams, see if, see if you recognize this person in your dreams and maybe that could uh, solidify this notion that they are somebody that you are here to uh, deal with. But uh, as I said in a former video, uh, in another video for, for October, there was a reason that you and this person broke up. So never forget that. Don't romanticize people that come back because whatever reason, if you did have a very serious reason to break up with this person, then those issues can't be kind of like um, overlooked. You have to still deal with them. And in that kind of heady period of uh, reuniting with somebody, those things can get swept under the rug and they need to be brought out and looked at. So Mercury, I just wanted to say, because I didn't really talk about Mercury in the second, um, your mind is on your money. You may be trying to crunch numbers, trying to get your budget in order, or simply talking about money, possibly with an employer. Because Venus retrograde, I mean, even though it ha hasn't traveled through that second house, it still could be about your self-esteem. You know, am I asking for what I'm worth or am I selling myself short? Remember, the second house is a house of self-esteem too. And so you may be thinking about that in relationship um, to the money that you earn. Maybe you are 
um, not asking for what you deserve because you're, you, you don't, you question whether you deserve it and you shouldn't do that. So I think that there's a lot of internal work that's going on for you at this time, Scorpio. And I know that you are great. You specialize in shadow work. So get busy. Okay. That's what I have for you. And if you'd like a more, um, you know, precise <laughs> reading of some, you know, kind of like major astrological transits that are occurring for you in the next year. And, and some, you know, you can either get that or with the natal chart interpretation, which looks at your natal planets and, and how they influence you, the patterns. Um, I have links for those readings below. Have a great October, Scorpio. Bye.